Hi, baby. How you doing? This year's baby. Hi, cutie. Yeah, we well. had found brand new ones, like three of them under that tree. I don't know how many months ago. How long do they take to mature to that size? Uh, they get to this size in about uh, four or five weeks. Okay. So yeah, this was this was long before that, but um, and we just left them there and they, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but this one I didn't think would make it on its own, so. Just a little baby kestrel, just. Especially since there's so many birds around yeah. here and they're all very aggressive about their nests right now. Well, this, this, this one's about, uh, about five weeks old. Okay. <clears throat> and it's a little male. And this is the time of year they all start coming in. Um, ba basically what happens is uh, birds outgrow the nest, that's normal. They end up on the ground below the nest, which is normal. And as long as they're not in a life-threatening situation, we just leave them and mom and dad continue to feed and care for them. Oh. And so that's what this guy is. He's just a, just a baby and... So should we just put him back? But where did you find him? Well, um, I was walking by in between the house and this tree here and he came out of, I don't know if there's a nest up in... They like to nest in holes. What's up? They like to nest in holes and so Yeah, so I, holes I mean, and it seemed like he things. came out of this area here mm -hmm. and he flew right down to here and it seemed like by the way he was walking that his wing might have been injured, but... I could uh, almost be willing to bet you right at the peak is their nest. Up top there? Okay. Yep, that's where the nest is. Anyway, so um, then a, a couple of birds from this tree came down and like were pecking at him and dive bombed him, and so I thought, well, mm -hmm. he's at risk there, but maybe not. Mm -hmm. Well, we can take him and finish him off, but oh, yeah, I can see another one poking Ted out up there. Oh, up under so that right little in that corner there. Yep, that's there's a the hole right there there's in the middle. Right there. Oh yeah, that's the castle. Oh, nest. okay. So, so woodpecker must him, leaving him right woodpecker here. must have chewed, made a yeah, hole in there. Yes, we have lovely woodpeckers. Yeah, they do that, and then the kestrels take over the holes. So you get, you're going to end up with probably two or three more of these. Okay. Right here. So should we just leave it right here? And it's okay with me, and we can call you if we feel like he's. As long as. Uh, yeah. You know, this is this is a great place. This is and it's shady, and and you've got they eat insects yeah. and little. Mice and little birds. Sleepy little boy. So, yes. and he's not the skinny, nest is, is he? Right up there in that hole, we can see some more right. pecking out. Yeah, what is that thing? This is a kestrel falcon. Yeah, that's well, the same thing we called you about before. Uh huh. Yeah. And you told us over the phone, and I thought about that later. Yeah. But I didn't know if it was the same bird. Yeah, these these are kestrel. These falcons. are only five weeks old, so that out. was a long time. You told me yeah. The one, the yeah, the nest gets big, and the parents kick them out, and then well, the parents them. don't even kick them out. They're just too big to be in there. Yeah. So they start coming out. And so they just start cut coming out and they end well, up Well, yeah, on the... these other ones were yeah. just babies. I mean, they still yeah. had the um, down on them. Right. There were like three of them down below there, but we, uh, so we left them alone and eventually they, mm -hmm. I mean, we never saw any other sign of them, but. Yeah, well, like I said, this one's about five weeks and they're, they're uh, so probably full, not... full, full, full grown and flying at six weeks. Okay, so probably not a broken wing, just, no, um, just learning how to use his wings. Yeah, just, just a baby. Okay. And so if, if it's okay to leave him here, if, if, if you don't want him left here, then we'll take him and finish raising him. But oh, this is... No, no, it's whatever you think. We just, well, I was just worried when those we other we birds care. were being so aggressive with them. Hey, good little one. Well, yeah, that's what the other birds do. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, they're, they're the, the smallest falcon in North America and the most common. And I usually get about uh, a dozen or more of these in every year that we care for. Uh, and uh, so he's, uh, like I said, perfectly fine, perfectly healthy, and uh, it'd be nice if let just let mom and dad do their thing. Okay. So you think they'll come? They'll come feed him and. Oh yeah. That's what mom and dad do. Well, how about when the sprinklers come on here? What, uh, what time do they come on? Well, whenever I turn them on. Oh, uh, okay. I'll get but them off the grass for that. On this afternoon or evening. You can put them over, or we over there. there, and I can wait till tomorrow or whatever. Well, I was gonna say he can. Yeah. We can well, move well him once over we leave, he'll start brush. walking, walking around and stuff, and he ends up over, over there. You know, right, right now this is nice and shady. It's a nice spot for it. Yeah. Okay. Because we first she saw him. I never did see him until I he was in the doorway over there, the garage, and I picked him up from there. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, I 
I left them alone Doing over okay. here after they were. Yeah, I've got a nest box out, out by my house that, that raises baby kestrels, and they, they eat a lot of grasshoppers. Okay. And so we, we love to have them around. They eat grasshoppers, they eat mice, and uh, they eat occasionally they'll eat, eat a little a little house sparrow or something. But mostly grasshoppers and mice. A oh, pretty little guy. Yeah, they're pretty little guys. So it's really and nice the, to have them around. The males have the blue shoulders, and the females right. are just red. Okay. Yeah, and this is, I think, the only bird of prey that has a color difference. Mm. Or one or very few. One or very few. Yeah, the basically the females is this color all the way across, all, all the way down here is is the reddish brown. The males have the blue shoulders and the blue circle around the oh, head. God, yeah. And so this this is a little male. Okay. So yeah, he seems so mellow. Is that normal? Well, he well, actually <laughs> he's, he's frightened. He doesn't want you to eat him. Okay. So he's just kind of laying there saying, please, laying low like, pl yeah, please don't eat me. Yeah, playing dead. He's playing dead. Pretty much. Yeah, we have, okay. only have one dog right here now, but that dog is afraid he's that thing. Uh, yeah. well, then, and he's down there. I mean, if he came more out, he's with yeah. us. Sure. Or she's with us, so he, she won't bother it. Yeah. Okay. When well, like, like I said, if you don't mind, uh, yeah, well, I, now that we know. One less mouth I have to feed. Yeah, no, that's and fine. That way, and you've got beautiful habitat here for them to keep eating bugs. Yeah. <laughs> how, how big do they get when they're... That's pretty much it. That's the... That's it. It's basically, size. at this age, about five weeks, it still has some, a little bit more feather to grow, but body sizes, that's it. Oh, wow. But the yeah. parents will come and feed it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's basically, uh, uh, you know, that's, that's like I said, part of, part of the process, like I was explaining to your wife, that, uh, that when they get about this size, they're too big to be in that hole anymore. Mm -hmm. And they end up on the ground below, but still can't fly. And so mom and dad still fly around catching bugs and stuff for it and bringing the bugs to, to feed the babies. And in another uh, few days, that baby will be strong enough to start chasing mom and dad around. And they'll just follow mom and dad out into the fields. And they'll and get they... noisy too, won't they? Yeah. With one mom well, and dad. I'm sure you've probably heard a little cheep, 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 yeah, cheep sounds up, up there. All yeah, over. That... Our home is uh, yeah, that home. complements of the woodpeckers. Yeah, right, exactly. So I was going to say, yeah, it looked like a woodpecker hole. Oh, but... well, we're getting... Anytime you come across wild anything, and we, we're going to use birds for, for an example, wild birds, and I don't care if it's uh, uh, a, a little robin that has fallen from its nest, or it's, or it's an uh, an injured eagle that was hit by a car, the first thing you do is don't pick it up. That's rule number one. You don't pick it up. You observe the animal and you basically get as much information as you can as to your location. If you, if you have a GPS, GPS coordinates are helpful. Um, if you're on the highway and you can see a mile marker, get the mile marker. Is it on the right-hand side of the, of the road, the left-hand side of the road? Uh, any any identifying marks. Um, if, a, if the house with a blue roof uh, and it's 200 yards to the west of that, if you can get good information, that helps a lot. And, and then get on the phone and call someone that could help. Um, even if it's a little robin, and the reason for that is the vast majority of times people are picking up these animals when they actually don't need help. And so let's go go with a small songbird like a robin to start with. You got a little robin, it's running around your backyard, running around the the, the city park, or under a under a nice uh, group of trees or whatever. Birds outgrow the nest. This is normal. Uh, birds up, end up on the ground below the nest. Completely normal as long as they're not in a life-threatening situation, like in the middle of a road or in a parking lot or where they're going to get killed, uh, we leave them there uh, because mom and dad will continue to come and feed and care for them because it's normal for them to come out of the nest before they can fly. This is all. In fact, right now, this time of year, you know, I have got robins and I have got uh, goldfinches and I've got sparrows and I've got everything running around my yard under the lilac bushes and everything. In fact, when I mow the lawn, I have to be very careful not to run over all these babies that are running around the yard. Uh, so so they're just kind of everywhere right now. Mom and dad are, are feeding them and caring for them, and it's wonderful. Now, if it isn't a life-threatening situation, then, it, then you can 
especially if it's a small songbird, you can move it off to a safe location close to where it was and then call someone to get a little bit of advice. Now that's that's for the little songbirds, um, the, the, the stuff that's not gonna hurt you. Now, when it comes to apex predators, like, like our little peregrine here, I'm pretty girl. If it comes to apex predators, these can be dangerous to work with, especially something the size of an eagle. And, and so if it's a, a, a large predatory bird, if it's an owl, if it's a, a hawk or a falcon or an eagle, by all means, please don't try to pick it up yourself. Uh, the talons are absolutely razor sharp and they can injure you. Uh, and one of the hardest things that people don't understand is, you know, even this falcon, even though its talons are not nearly as big and powerful as an eagle, those will puncture all the way through your hand. And so you get, you, they get this puncture right into your hand. And these basically puncture into the bowels of the animals they feed on. And so they're, these talons are covered with really, really nasty bacteria. And so you get a puncture wound from a bird of prey like this, and you can get an infection that literally could cause severe injury or, or even death with some of the bacterias that can get into, you, into your system from these talons. And so please, please don't try to pick them up. Um, call, call your local police dispatch. Don't call 911. 911 is for human emergencies. They get mad at you. But you can call police dispatch. You can call your local wildlife rescue center. You can call your local game warden uh, uh, to get to get someone that has the the skills and expertise to handle these animals.